Hello ladies, gentlemen, and deceased. My name is Emily Sophia and I'm going to be walking you guys through the latest episode of The Walking Dead. So we are on the penultimate episode of the fourth season. Things are slowly but surely crescendoing to what I can only assume is going to be something insanely juicy by the end. So let's go ahead and talk about the road to, spoiler alert, Terminus. And speaking of spoilers, there's going to be plenty more in this review, so if that is not what you're looking for here, then I would suggest that you queue up this review if you're looking for some thoughts on the craziness and come on back. We will have a nice little chat. So without further ado, let's dive in two feet. We are going into the depths, and at long last, we are starting to see the convergence of several of our splintered off groups. We have Rick and company, that being Rick, Carl, and Michonne. We have Daryl, who is with um, the Jonas Brothers, aka Joe, and his band of merry men. We've got Beth in who freaking knows where, and unfortunately, from what I hear from others, there could be a very bitter fate either awaiting her or that she's already met, but I don't know much about that, so share your thoughts in the comments. And then we have Abraham, Eugene, and Rosita, and Glenn, and Tara, and Sasha, and Bob, and Maggie pretty much freaking everybody. I think that covers all of them. So, oh, and then of course we have Carol and Tyrese, who are also supposedly on the road to Terminus, and basically everybody is walking the tracks and preparing to throw their hats in the ring and see what's gonna come of this madness. Are we working our way to a, a bigger and better version of Woodbury, or what exactly do we have here? We shall soon see. I have, I have a creeping suspicion that we are not in for, well, there will probably be a welcome party, and then once the curtain comes up, there is going to be inevitably some sinister underworking, so for those of you who have read the comics, maybe you know, maybe you don't. Speaking of which, for someone who is finally starting to catch up in the comics, would you suggest that I just go ahead and get as caught up on the comics as I possibly can, and then just kind of watch the show and see how things converge, or sort of watch the show and kind of not, or watch the show first, prioritizing that and then catching up through the comics. What would you guys suggest? Because I'm really, I'm really kind of at a crisis point here because I like to be surprised with what I see in the show, but at the same time I'm really anxious to continue the original comic lore because there's some really fascinating stories in there and the, the characters go on some very different journeys, but... It's all really interesting stuff, so without further ado, let's actually talk about what we watched in this episode. So, I'm going to start off with the plight of Daryl, which freaking sucks because, as we all know, just as he was getting comfortable and kind of finding his footing with somebody in this unforgiving wilderness, what? The hands of fate pretty much molest the situation, and now we've got Daryl on his own again. We don't know what's become of Beth, although there are a lot of not-so-delightful suppositions about what's happened with her, and the conspiracies, and the subterfuge, and I've even heard talk of supposed cannibalism, um, to which she might fall prey or I I really don't know folks <laughs> but there's always got to be a cannibal there is a cannibal at the end of every line I, I freaking swear and for those of you who well I'm not gonna say anything further about anything because I'm trying really hard not to accidentally spoil things and I feel like I'm gonna do that if I keep running my mouth so anyways we have Daryl we've got Joe Joe and Co the Jonas Brothers and they have some interesting, if not disconcerting, rules by which they are governed here. And Joe kind of has a really weird outlook on this world. While Daryl argues that everything has fallen apart, Joe seems to suggest that everything is coming together in the way that he and his men go about life and camaraderie and community and brotherhood and all of that. All of that fun jazz. So they've got the process of claiming. They're all about telling the truth. 
and oh what was what was the other business yeah but but mainly mainly it's this this system of claiming that's going on and then they try and you know sort of they have a sort of diplomatic process which ultimately may end in violence if somebody wants to go that far into the system as we see with the guy who is messing with daryl and the whole kind of like old testament solomon style justice where they've got like they've got the rabbit and they're trying to figure out who's got what it's not so m much even necessarily about having having the meat and having this material and sustenance as it is about having a sense of self of pride you know I think that that kind of plays into it as well and Daryl's got his own code of ethics that this code in which he has been placed is kind of breaching and we know that Daryl's is the way how Daryl wants it done is how it's gonna be done at least that's what we hold to because we are his invisible cheerleaders. If he only knew that he had the moral support that he does, I'm I'm sure I'm sure that he would appreciate it in his own way. I'm sure he'd he'd raise us a glass. But um <laughs> so I of course am pretty nervous about his position in this group, being that as they get back on the tracks, they're heading for Terminus-ish, although Joe doubts that they're going to be able to find a home there. Of course, he talks about the guy who was crouching out in the house and attacked his men. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That would be our very own 007 Rick. Rick Grimes on on the uh, unexpected mission, a nap gone horribly wrong. And so these guys have one side of the story that we saw several episodes ago. And should there be any encounter with Rick and his group in any way to recognize Rick as the guy, uh, the monster under the bed <laughs> in their eyes, um, well, then we know that not so civil exchanges are probably bound to go down but of course if Daryl's get involved in the situation I would imagine that he is gonna throw himself before Rick case closed I mean in this series they've they've really become very tight granted everybody's kind of been in a state of complete and utter separation but once you find those old people that you've that you've shared so much with I mean, you've got to make a choice if you're if you're going to invite them back with open arms and do what you can to protect that relationship, or if you're just going to let the world pass you by and and be as Darwinian as you possibly can. There is a cat hair in my eye, and I swear if it goes in any further, I'm going to be lobotomized. Okay, anyway, <laughs> hi. So what do you guys think is going to happen? I mean, judging by the sneak peek for next week, I don't feel that we're in for happy things with Rick, which makes me really sad because I missed him. I missed him super much. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that he is my favorite character of the entire series, but he's been such an integral part that it's it's been strange to be to be without him and i i don't like it it just makes me feel sad so let's go let's go switch to talking about rick and company so we just got a little tiny tidbit of them but i love i love the radiant woman of the wild that is michonne she has she's maintained such a beautiful sense of humor throughout all of these ordeals and and that smile of hers mm. She knocks him dead, me included. <laughs> so, I mean, her and Carl having their little competition on the tracks, and Rick is just kind of taking the moment to enjoy this little kind of family unit that they've got working their way down the tracks to God knows what. And I hope the very best for them. Judging by the state of Rick, in what we see in the preview, I sense that the happy times are perched on a perilous edge, and I am not a fan of that. So, please, Rick, refrain from dying for as long as you possibly can. That that is my formal request. Um, I would I would love for your consideration. 
call me if you have any questions or concerns. I'm, I'm gonna do what I can to lobby for your survival. Anyways, oh, I just... The happiness, it, it never stays. That, that is basically what this show has taught me at the end of the day. The, the smiles, you know, after laughter comes tears and the words of Wendy Reen, so... Pretty sure that's where we're headed. <laughs> the road to Terminus is the road to tears, okay? Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see what's gonna happen with them. I guess, you know, hedge your bets as far as who's gonna kick the great bucket. And we'll see whose foot makes contact with that container of life and death. Um, then, let's switch back over to one of the groups that we hadn't seen in kind of a little while. We've got the group headed to DC, um, and Glenn and Tara kind of in that mix. Tara has latched herself on to Glenn, feeling that she owes him for what happened back at the prison and genuinely wanting to, you know, she wants to expel the guilt from that experience. She was so close to the devil himself that this is kind of her way of, of absolving that, you know. This, this is her way of, uh, of forgiving herself and kind of cleansing herself from that whole experience which poor honey didn't know what she was getting herself into uh, fist bumping that son of a bitch but so we've got we've got that duo she follows him into the dark and luckily the dark did not mean death in fact they got victoriously rescued in a most fantastic way um, one of those everything went better than expected moments that that had me um, very much in my emotions were, were surmounting there for sure. You really can't help that. But still got some interesting dynamics with Abraham and company because Abraham is this really kind of powerful figure. But he constantly defers um, to Eugene, who his dialogue just, just cracks me up. Just sort of his, his way about things, the conversations that he has. I mean, he's very cadenced in his speech. He never skips a beat, and he's constantly intertwining all of this nerd talk into, like, he, he has this, this very sort of formal tone that, like, I, I don't know, he, if, if somebody had a quote book for that character, it would be quite, quite a gold mine of stuff. He just sort of fuses all kinds of ways of talk, and that's what makes me feel kind of uncomfortable about him in a way, is that I just don't really know what he's all about, and I think that's kind of the point, too. I feel like we're, we're sort of supposed to question this whole mission um, to get him to D.C., this whole idea that he knows exactly what started everything, but he can't let anybody in on any tiny little fraction of what the deal even is. He just has this very strange way about him, and I suspect that Glenn doesn't trust it. But ultimately, their paths intertwine again as um, after, after the split at the not exactly tunnel of love, um, Eugene takes them on a few left turns. They sort of end up where they assume that Glenn and Tara would be if they were able to make it out of the pit of love. And then everything goes awesomely and there is a victorious massacre of the dead, um, which for which we were very thankful. I mean, it was distinctly possible that Tara and getting snagged there in the cave was, that was gonna be her final hour. Um, and yet Glenn yet again proves himself the knight as ever, and he's gonna stick it out with her. He's, he's been on this dead set mission to find Maggie, and they, you know, and he's been picking up those breadcrumbs that she and Bob and Sasha had, had left for him. Less of breadcrumbs than the, the bloody interiors of, of certain corpses, but it works to the same effect, and as long as you're not particularly hungry in your travels, then 
you know, they kind of serve the same purpose. But uh, yeah, so I mean that was a really exciting conversion of groups. So now we've got this new super group and they're all kind of trying to piece things together. Who wants to go where? Who's going to do what? They decide to make Terminus a pit stop. A place to gather supplies, to take a breather, to get some manicures done, catch up on, you know, the national gossip. <laughs> Being that, it's, it's hard to say who got where and when and how, you know, there's kind of liven up their social lives ever so slightly. And of course Terminus has this, this sort of cleaned up and, and pretty look to it. Uh, <laughs> all things, all things considered. Fences um, are a rather, a rather lovely feature of uh, apocalyptic architecture. Um, pretty much, that is pretty much living the high life. You got that chain link, people know that you are of the upper crust of society. <laughs> Being that you've got a pretty, pretty decent way of keeping all the plebeians out, you know. All, all the peasants out there, okay? Um, so, <laughs> there is, you know, there is much to say about Terminus, and for those of you who have read the comics, I'm sure that you are a wealth of knowledge on <laughs> such matters, but I am of the opinion that this place is not exactly to be trusted, even, even with the, uh, the girthy, long-haired hippie woman and her, you know, whatever concoction or whether she's like doing laundry or making soup or or whatever the occasion. Things seem to be homely enough and they're pretty jazzed to be off the road only if for a night, but that night may be a longer one than they anticipate. There's just rarely, rarely does one get to make pit stops when you encounter these kinds of communities, sort of like with Joe's groups. Everybody just likes making these rules. Everybody's kind of trying their hand at reordering the way that the world works. Let's take it from the ground up and uh, make a whole new system, break it in and see how things go. Pretty much any anybody's a candidate for a good power trip, so I don't know, I don't know, I don't like it. I don't like it in the slightest. It's nice to see everybody together, but do you want everybody together under Satan's roof? Not so sure. Um, yeah, so I'm not gonna say anything as far as my predictions about Terminus other than that terrible feeling in the pit of my stomach and soul. Um, yeah, and for those of you who've read the comics or whatever, if Terminus shows up in there, I mean, I'm sure y'all know and that the show will probably go in a very similar direction, but feel free to share your thoughts below. And who else am I missing? Yeah, because we saw a little bit of Daryl, we got Rick, we got Maggie and Glenn reunited, and it feels so good. They bring me much joy. That was a happy moment. Of course, when Maggie has Glenn burn the picture of her, you know, saying that he's never gonna need a picture of her again, we're all just like, oh God, jinx it a little more, will ya? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's kinda how that situation strikes me. Here we are sitting in the seat of paranoia, which is, which is something that, I mean, the characters kind of suffer from to some extent, being that they're sort of living in this world, but then we just know all these, <laughs> the way that everything always gets subverted. You, you think that you'll always be together and well, you know, Real life proves just as much as fiction that that is far from the case, my darlings. So I hope that they stay together and that they will not have to do so in death. But I don't know. I don't know. Everybody's saying, everybody is anticipating that there is going to be a big character death before the season is out. And I don't, I don't really know what to expect because the season finale from season three, yeah, that was the last one was actually kind of, it was, you know, some people held it to be kind of anticlimactic, but really, really it was just kind of this calm before the storm. So I feel, I feel that we're probably gonna get something a little, a little crazier. I, I don't know, I, I don't really know what to expect anymore. And are, are Carol and Tyrese gonna make it? I mean, there's still some kind of outlying issues here I, I don't know what to say. 
so much except that I just I don't know what I want. I don't know if I want to be totally knocked off my socks and destroyed like last week because if that happens every single Sunday night for the rest of, of eternity, I'm just going to start skipping days of the week. <laughs> I'm going to save up all my all my hours for sleeping on on Sundays just so I can just so I can hide and try and recover. But well, I mean, we've only got we've only got one week left in this season, but then other other shows are going to be occupying the, you know, the Sunday night party time <laughs> when I when I take my heart to to the cleaners, you know. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I am anxious to see where things are going. Again, this episode was kind of more of a slow crescendo. I mean, there were some, there were some moments of anxiety, some, some moments of onion cutting, you know, if you, if you catch my drift. Things I'm excited about, things that have me nervous as all get out, and I mean, that's pretty much where we should be with this kind of show, you know, um, ever teetering between hope complete and utter despair so that's just kind of the way of things I I wonder if we'll find out about the fate of Beth before things are over this season um I I wonder if everyone will at least touch terminus if anything uh, lethal is to happen, if it's going to be on the road there too, within or just outside. It's just a world where everyone's pretty much potentially screwed at any given time. So yeah, and, and we'll see what happens with the Washington DC scheme. Is Eugene going to be exposed for something? I mean, there's, there's a lot of new relationships that have kind of formed as well and that I'm curious to see develop um, assuming that there is any kind of freedom of expression within Terminus don't really know all who arrive survive question mark it's it's certainly certainly a clever way of, of uh, putting that but We'll see if the reality matches up. So thank you guys oh so much for watching. I can't wait to put up some more videos. Bates Motel stuff is coming. I've got some gaming reviews coming down the pipes as well as a music cover as soon as I possibly can. So y'all keep it classy. We'll talk more dead stuff next weekend. It's gonna be a hoedown throwdown and I can't wait to do it with you. So you guys take care and I will be back before you know it.